Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful, beautiful day. How are y'all doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. So first of all, I just want to say thanks for all the support on this mini-series. Uh, you guys seem to like it. Um, we haven't really gotten that far, but still, you know, um, just that you like the idea of it is, is a good sign. So I appreciate that. Uh, today we're gonna work with some stuff um, actually making some type of a game object and moving it and, and kind of you know getting some kind of game stuff going so like I said in the last video if you haven't seen it uh, this game is gonna be more about some simple stuff just getting stuff moving mouse position trying to click on the boxes getting points maybe printing out some text on the screen just simple game right without textures without all that stuff maximum we're gonna have some colors so before I get started, um, I just want to do one thing, and that is I'm going to remove this color variable from clear, from my window clear function. That's because I just wanted to clear to, I think it's black as the default. Yeah, you can see if you hover here, 000, 000 255, that's, that's black, as black as it gets. So we're going to just keep that, and yeah, then we're going to make some game objects kind of in our in our case it's going to be game object so i'm just going to say uh, game objects whatever you can call them whatever you want now there are different things in sfml and i'm going to be using something that we won't be using that often in the future um uh, that's because that is because like i said we're not going to be using textures so if you want to use textures let me just say that first you're going to use something called a sf sprite usually because well I'll, I'll get to that. You know what? I'll get to that. Let me just tell you what we're going to be using. We're going to be using rectangle shape. Okay. So we're going to create a rectangle shape called, uh, what are we going to call it? We're just going to call it one enemy. Okay. We're just going to have one enemy right now. We'll get to it. Uh, but that's, that's that. Okay. So once we have this rectangle shape, um, we're going to go to game and we're going to go in here, init variables. You know what, since we're making this game thing, let me just say void init enemies because we're probably going to use that later. So I'm going to make my own little function called init enemies and define that, hopefully. Come on, there you go. So once that's done, um, there you go. We're going to initialize our enemy here. So we have our enemy and then we can just write a little dot here and see what we have to uh, to work with. So we can get a bunch of stuff. You don't have to really look at the get just now. What you want to look at is this. We're going to be using move a lot. Rotate we can use if we want, but we're not going to do that. Scale is cool. It's used quite a bit. Fill color is cool. We can use that when, when we hit the enemy to change the color. Um, origin, you don't have to think about that right now. Set texture. And yeah, there you go. That's how it is basically. Yeah, so you can set the texture of it and stuff. Now the thing is, a rectangle shape can be used without a texture, so it has a bunch of other variables. It has the color, it has it has a bunch of stuff that um, lets it render out and fill a color without requiring a texture. Now a sprite is made to be worked with a texture, so you, you can't really use a sprite without a texture. That's why we're going to use sprite later on. But for this case where we're not using textures, enemy is fine. So first of all, we're going to set the enemy's size. So let me just say set size scale is different scale is like once you set a size you can change the scale to maybe two and that's two times as big as it was and you set it back to one it's going to be one again so that's cool if you set it to minus one you're kind of going to flip it so it's good to use that sometimes when you're flipping your character uh, but anyway we're going to set the size and we're going to say an enemy is going to be 100 f and you got to do something special here you got to use a sf vector to f here and say 100f, 100f. And I do dot .f after because that signifies that this is a float value and not a double or an integer or anything. It's, it's definite float value and the compiler C++ doesn't really have to convert that into a float afterwards. Which will happen if you skip the f. Uh, but you need this vector2f because this function takes a vector2f as a, as a parameter. So, yeah, you're going to have to use that. 
Uh, it's kind of weird why they don't have X and Y. They have that in some functions like set position, but not in set size. Uh, anyway, once you have that, so now our enemy's size is set. Now I'm going to set its color. So enemy set fill color, SF color. Now you can choose whatever color you want. I'm just going to take cyan, I guess, just so it shows up, pops up real nice. Uh, so now the color is set. We can set some other stuff if we want. Why not? Let's do, let's set outline. Oh, whoops. What am I doing? I'm dumb. Set outline. There we go. Outline color. So I'm going to set the outlines color to, uh, oh, that's going to hurt my eyes. Green is cool. So the outlines color is going to be green. And now we need to set the size of the outline since by default there is no outline. Uh, so we need to say, okay, we want some outline, uh, set outline thickness. Make sure it's not get. And then you got to give it a float value. So I'm just going to say 1.f just so we can barely see it. Okay, so now we have an enemy which is shown showing up and everything, but we missed one thing and that is the position. So I usually set that up first. Enemy dot set position. And what that does is just put the enemy in a position in the world. It is by default 0, 0 as you can read here. And that means that it's in the top left corner of the screen. Now, let me just explain. Let me just print this dude out at the default location. Uh, and let me just show you what's going on. So let me do that. First of all, we're going to print this guy out or render it on the screen. All right, so we're going to just put this in it enemies here. And then we're going to go down here and we're going to actually render our game object. So we're going to render it on the window, obviously. You can render it on different things later. We'll talk about that. Uh, but we're just going to draw it directly on the window now, which you usually don't do. And then we're going to say, what do you want to draw? Well, we're going to say we want to draw the enemy, enemy rectangle shape. So this is going to clear the window, draw the enemy and display it. And it's going to happen all the time in the loop. And something that can happen on your computer is that your, uh, your frame rate is going to be too high. And that can be bad, right? So what you can do is you can go in and say this window, set frame rate limit. And we can set this to 144 whatever you have. I'll put it to 144 because of my uh, 144 hatch screen. So, but you can put it to 60, 30, whatever you want. Just set it to something nice and then draw. Okay. So let's just run this. Hopefully it's going to work. All right. So there's our enemy It's a little big, should probably have 50, 50, uh, but there it is. All right. You can barely see the outline as well. Just barely. Am I even recording this right now? So it's barely rendering the stuff and that's all good. It's good to go. So once you get that down, you saw that it was in the top left, right? Now let me just run this again. Sorry about that. Uh, just look at this closely. Now it's in the zero, zero position. You're like, what? This isn't zero, zero. The middle of the object is in zero, zero. Now for those of you who know SFML and how OpenGL and everything uh, runs its coordinates or SFML, sorry, uh, has uh, its coordinate system, you're going to know that in the top left is the actual point where we're referring to when we're setting the position. So if I set it to the center of the screen, the object won't be perfectly centered. The top left corner of the object will be centered here. So the object will be kind of like this offset to the right and bottom. So just remember every position of the object is originates here, top left corner. Okay. And the top left of the window is zero, zero. To the right is positive x axis, to the bottom is positive y axis, and then vice versa, up and to the left. Uh, but just remember that, it's very important because sometimes you might get confused. So if I put the position to 10, 10 f, don't forget the dot f's because those are important if you want to keep your code good and optimized. All right, and just uncomment that and run that. So it's going to set it to 10, 10. It's going to offset it to 10 with 10 pixels. And if you see, it's from the top left that it's moved 10 pixels. Okay. So just remember that. Um, good, good. So you created your enemy. Now you want to shorten the enemy down. We can do this in two ways. You can, the best way to do it would have been to do uh, 50 F 50 F, right? Just to half the size, but you can also do this just because we we're playing around enemy dot set scale 
uh, and then you can say SF vector 2F. And these are factors. This isn't pixels, okay? This is like how many times smaller do you want it, whatever. So it's always going to be 1, right, from the beginning. So I just want to set it to 0.5F, 0.5F. And that's going to half the size of my, uh, of my enemy, okay? So run this. And I'll, hopefully you're going to see something that's 50-50. Yep, that's good. So there you go. That's perfect. Now, before we end the video, I want to show you guys one thing. And that is the mouse position. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to start printing some stuff out to the console window. All right. So I'm going to have to include some C++ stuff here. So include um, IO stream. Yeah, it's just IO stream. Okay. So we're going to include IO stream and go into game.h. And in the, our update function, because this isn't something rendering, right? This is updating. So update mouse position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say std c out mouse pos this. Or we can do this sf mouse get position. And this is an internal kind of function that exists, which gets the mouse's position. And it's in a vector 2i. You have seen 2f. That stands for two floats in one. This is a 2i, so two integers, a pair of integers, obviously, because a position is always two values, right? The x value and the y value. Uh, so we're just going to get the position, and then you can just say dot x. Don't forget the two parentheses. So dot x, and then the same thing, but dot y, and then a new line, preferably. And then we're going to get always going to be able to see the mouse position. So I'm just going to run this and see so that we see it. Okay, so if I put my mouse, oh, this is from the from the screens. Okay, so this is also a good example. There are different types of mouse positions. There is one that is relative to the screen, one that's relative to the window, and one that's relative to the view. Now, we haven't talked about the view yet, so don't worry, but it's basically like a camera. So if you're moving your camera around the world, if you have a bigger world, it's going to be relative to that. So it's not always going to be 0, 0 up top left here uh, relative to your window. It's going to be relative to your camera, to your world. Uh, but that was relative to the, uh, to the relative to the screen. Now we want something that's relative to the window. That's what we're going to be using. So relative to the window. And to do that, what you want to do is you don't want to do this. You don't just want to get the position like this. But in the next video, we're going to save it in another variable. But anyway, for now, I just want to show you this. I'm just going to pass in my window. Uh, wait, it wants a SF render window. Wait, what does it want? You can kind of look at what it wants. Uh, SF. Okay, this window. I think that's what it wants, pretty sure. I think it just wants the window, reference to a window. Yeah, see, it's it's a reference thing. So you want to dereference the window and send it in. Sorry about that. Uh, so once that's done, here you can see what's happening. Uh, make it a little nicer. Maybe just put this, just put this down like that. Okay, so. Let's run this. This should be relative to the window now. Uh, but it's going to be hard to read, I think. Yeah, it's hard to read. Let me comment this out and try it again. Now you should be able to see your mouse position relative to the window. See? Zero, zero, right there, just about. And then on that pixel, zero, zero. And then if I move it to the left, it's not my screen's uh, positions anymore. It's relative to where the window. If I put my window here, You'll see that it's less, right? Minus 50 only. If I put my window here, it's minus 1,000. So it's all relative to this point here, to the window. All right? So now we can kind of get each pixel's position in the window itself. So if I click on this object, we're going to be clicking on the object, okay? Because this object is at from 0 to here, it's about 10 pixels, right? 10 pixel, 10 pixels. So I want my mouse to be here. If it was relative to the screen, I'd have to have my mouse in the screen over here to get the same value to be able to click in the object. So that doesn't make sense, right? We want to have it in the window. 
so there you go guys and girls hopefully that made sense hopefully i didn't do it too quick but what we learned in this video is basically rendering something called a rectangle shape which we created here as a variable and that was basically a square or a rectangle any shape you want to give it four points and it could fill with a color it can have a size an outline and basically a position in the world right and then you can move it around we haven't used move yet but we will eventually um, and we got mouse positions with different relativities okay so basically if that's a word I don't know I'm not sure but we can get it relative to the screen or the window or the view eventually uh, and then we rendered our enemy of course and we also made use of both the update function and the render function so rendering is here game logic is here so there you go guys and girls hopefully that was cool I didn't comment in my functions like I said I might do that later but uh, yeah hopefully you learned something if you have any questions please ask me in the uh, comment section and thanks for all the support thanks for all the kind words check out the description box if you can drop a like subscribe of course check out my patreon page my support page all that stuff all the support you give is invaluable all right I, it really means a lot just watching the video means a lot so uh so yeah keep that up if you can uh but there you go take care and i'll see you guys and girls in the next one all right bye bye